Oh, hey, YouTube. I didn't see you there. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Out of Order. Welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I don't like wasting time here. So anyway, guys, I'm going to be showing you the most popular editing effects, how to use them, and overall, just how to make them a lot more creative and take full advantage of these powerful effects. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So as you guys saw in the intro, this is the edit we're going to be working with. I made this edit in about, I don't know, like four hours or so. It's nothing too crazy. As you can see, we got some effects here. And I'm going to be running through this edit and breaking it down and highlighting the popular effects that I used in this edit and I'm gonna be showing you how I obtained this effect and how you can too so let's jump right into it so the first effect I want to talk about is this one right here a few moments later all right guys so I removed all the glows all the effects and all the color grading so as you can see all we have right here is just the raw composition but this is the effect I want to talk about right here so as you can see I synced this to the music so he's putting in this little clip into the sniper then he cocks it back and it's all synced to the music but let me play it out for y'all so what I did right there, as you can see, is when he puts the mag in, it's synced to a snare of the song, but I also added some effects on it too. And those two effects I want to show off are S Blomer Curves and S Vignette. Now S Vignette is pretty self-explanatory, so we'll start with this. This is the easiest one to recognize. It is essentially that little highlighting of it. So as you can see, it adds a little black border that's feathered out on the edge of the clip, so it adds more emphasis onto the gun. So this is what it looks like without it. This is with it. And I had this centered onto the gun, so as you can see one of these is on the center right here of the clip and this other one right here is on the center of the gun so as you can see there's two different versions that are coming in together so it's gonna obviously darken the whole clip but then it's also gonna darken and highlight more of the gun area too so I sync that up with keyframing if I play it without the vignette you'll notice it'll lose a lot of impact and emphasis on the gun so that's the reason I added that so let me play it out See, as you can see, there's still a little bit of an emphasis on it, but that's just because I darkened the clip too in the process. But with the Vin, yeah, it adds a lot more emphasis on him putting in the magazine of the gun. And then we also got S4 Mo Curves, and this is what really adds the impact. So if I turn this off, you'll notice immediately what's different about it. So let me play it out real quick. So as you guys can see, there's no zoom in on the gun. The zoom in, I feel like, is what gave this the most impact and added the most flow to, like, what's going on and what we're perceiving in the edit. So with it on, as you can see, it zooms in. And with s Blur Mo Curves, the coolest thing about this effect is you only need to keyframe one thing, and that is S Distance. So what I basically did is I selected the area I want to keyframe or I want the camera to position to. So as you can see, this is where the camera's going to zoom in onto, which is this little crosshair right here. And you can have it go anywhere, but I just set it right there. And then all I did was keyframe the Z distance. So if I open up the Z distance, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's just going to scale into that part of the little clip. And then it's going to scale out and boom, that's how we get that effect. And I feel like this part looks really insane. It looks pretty crazy doing that. So that's why I kept it in and I think it's really nice. Also, if you guys are curious about how I made these weird little particles going off in the background, be sure to check out my most recent video, my last video I recorded. It's probably not the most recent anymore since I'm going to be making a lot more videos. But go check out my latest video i'll leave a link down below where i teach you guys how to do just this effect right here with all the particles and shit flying around all right this next effect is pretty simple as well and in this effect basically i'm going to be showing you guys how i used warp and s distort to achieve this weird warp and distortion effect as you can see it's pretty self-explanatory so what i essentially did is i added warp and with warp this one's a pretty overused effect it's pretty common everyone likes this effect it's very popular basically i don't know why i said overused that makes it sound negative but it's not a negative effect all right it's pretty cool so so with S warp, I changed the warp style to fisheye. And what fisheye does is if you invert the fisheye, rather than looking like a fisheye, it looks almost like a skew. Like you're kind of distorting it. Like you like you increase your FOV almost. Now this is pretty useful for creating a sort of dramatic effect. So as you can see, what I did was I had him shoot the shot on the cinematic and then it flies into the other guy getting hit by the bullet. So what I did is combining that with warp and S distort, you're able to make that look. So with warp, it's pretty simple. Let me just turn this off and I'll show you what it looks like without it as I feel like this has the most impact on the clip itself. As you can see, it looks nowhere near as cool. The distortion is still pretty nice. And with distortion, what I usually do with the S distort is I usually lower the um, amount because when you lower the amount, it's gonna stretch in all the shadows of the clip. And then most importantly, I love to increase the blur lens size. So if you have the blur lens size small, which I'll lower like this, as you can see, it's gonna look more like a ripple. It almost makes it look like water. But when you have this really high, it makes the whole entire clip have like a big ass displacement over it. So that's usually why I like to keep the blur lens high 
high to give it that sort of like warping to where it looks like the whole map is warping rather than just making it look like water or like glass so with these two effects combined it is a very powerful look as you can see i feel like this really adds a lot of emphasis on this shot which is why i use it and i think it looks badass all right this next effect is an interesting one because the way i use this effect is very very differently how a lot of people use this effect and that effect will be key light but i don't like using it just for green screen there's actually a lot more features you can do with this effect it's very very powerful so this effect right here for example as you can see the whole map is changing colors so let me solo the layer and i'll show you guys what i mean this is what the clip looks like now if i remove this key light you'll notice that this map has green fog which is fine you know green fog is already pretty cool on an edit but nevertheless when i change and add key light onto it the fog is completely gone and then now all we're left with is just the map itself and what i did with that is i duplicated this clip right here and on the second clip i added hue and saturation and i just essentially keyframed the fog to change colors now there's many ways you can achieve this look but personally i feel like key light looks the best because it kind of distorts it like key light's not perfect as you can see you can see that some of the buildings are still left behind so rather than using like an actual keyer using key light just to replace and change the color that's how i used it in this instance and i use this effect a lot you don't just have to use key light just to replace the fog like i could add another key light and do the same thing for the ground maybe the building maybe the gun you get what i mean it's really really powerful just to change colors so instead of using key light just to key out you know green screens you can also use it to change colors too there is an effect that also is literally called change to color but i prefer using key light because you have more features so even though we could use the effect called change color too if we have key light and hue saturation we could do more we could still add more effects on it we're not just limited to just changing it we could have the whole background warp you know we could do a lot we can add as many effects as we want to on the bottom clip and then still have it be visible so key light that's my next pick for the most popular effects all right this next effect isn't necessarily an effect it's a style but i'm going to be teaching you how to use it and i did talk about this in my last video but we're going to cover it again here so basically if you've ever used photoshop before you'll know that photoshop has these blending modes where you can add an outline add a drop shadow add an inner shadow well after effects has that same thing so as you can see i composited this gun pretty decent and how i did that was by using these layer styles so if you select any clip i'll just select this one for example if you right click on the clip go to layer styles you can add all the stuff that you'll usually find on photoshop like drop shadow inner shadow outer glow inner glow basically all those kind of effects that you can normally do so what i did is i added an inner shadow i changed it to linear dodge and if i just completely make this dark and invisible you'll notice that the gun doesn't really have much shading on it it looks pretty bland and boring but if i put the shadow on it and i only made it small i only made it 11 but if i increase it you'll see you can add a glow on the gun and it looks pretty sick so that's how i was able to composite it and make it look like this little particle thing was flashing a bunch of light onto the gun so that's another cool useful tip layer styles not a lot of editors use them however it is still a pretty powerful tool that i think a lot more people should experiment with all right this next effect is a very simple effect however it is still pretty powerful and you can make a lot of creative use out of it and that is the bokeh effect this is a plugin by crossfire called crossfire bokeh and what it essentially does is it's similar to camera lens blur however i feel like it just looks so much better so as you can see the clip is pretty out of focus this is what it looks like without the bokeh and this is what it looks like with it so it's a pretty massive difference and this edit in particular i use the bokeh as a transition so as you can see it's not just as you know like a solid cut it's kind of a nice transition and even over right here when you first see the guy i use it to make him out of focus and then boom we got we're back in focus again <laughs> so that's just a simple effect it's pretty popular as well and i honestly really love it this is my go-to border plugin so honestly i never use any other border besides crossfire bokeh just because it looks the damn sexiest so it's pretty cool to use and next up on the last few effects i want to show you sexy flamingos is this effect right here that is s grunge so as you can see it almost looks like a paint splatter now if i solo this little adjustment layer which is what i have the clip on it's basically just this all it is is some more and some basically like paint almost now if i turn the warping off s grunge is very powerful it's one of the most powerful effects now you can use this to make transitions which i've demonstrated in some videos before and you can use it as just a normal effect so as you can see what i did was i added a little pink color and i also got a little green splatter right here and i keyframed the green splatter to shrink and i keyframed the pink color to grow bigger so as you can see you got these two little colors clashing into each other what well, the cool thing about it is when i combine 
combine this with an overlay. So if I just basically just turn this adjustment wire, use the overlay a little preset on there. And if I keyframe the opacity, it looks almost like a paint transition. And there's a lot more you can do with it. You can use this as a displacement map. You can use it as an overlay like I've done just here, or you can use that as a transition. So S grunge, very, very underrated. Honestly, it is really overpowered. And I use this effect a lot more than most people realize. So hey, give it a shot. And I also got S warp repeat on here. And what S warp repeat is pretty self-explanatory. It pretty much just repeats your clip. There's also an effect called S warp chroma, which does the exact same thing, except it changes colors. So I just stuck with S warp repeat. So all I had to do was if I sold this clip right here, it's basically just going to warp into existence. And you could change as many of these as you want. So if I lower this more, as you can see, there's going to be less of them, or I can increase it more. And at that point, it just looks like motion blur. But nevertheless, all I had to do was I just had to expand into frame. Boom. We combined that with the overlay transition that I made using S grunge. And that's pretty much all the effects I wanted to show you guys. However, before you click off just yet, let me say a few last words. All these effects can be really utilized to beyond what I've just told you. All right. The possibilities are endless with these effects. Now, some of these effects are plugins. I am partnered with Boris effects. So if you want to get a discount code on the Sapphire effects that I've demonstrated in this video, there'll be a link to it down below to get yourself a little discount on these plugins. But regardless with that, I just want to say that editing is kind of a pain in the ass, right? However, I just want to let y'all know that I'm going to be pushing out a lot more editing tutorials, a lot more guides, a lot more just, just editing viz that are going to be super sick, super fun to watch. All right, we're going to be experimenting with a ton of new stuff. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to drop a subscribe button and leave a like. It really supports and helps me out here. I just want to teach you guys the best way to do this shit without having a gatekeep or filter shit because that's all bullshit, you know? I want y'all to learn how to do this stuff. So with that being said, I'll leave the project file to this edit down below as well for free. So if you want to download the project file and learn and study it yourself, be sure to check it out. But nevertheless, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. My social media links are in the description down below as well as my editing Discord server. So if you want to go chat with me and hang out with all the cool guys, be sure to check it out. But hey, thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you all so much. And I'll catch you guys in the next video, boys. Peace out, gamers. They gon' play if they wanna